Mazda dealership quoted him 5,000 pounds just to get done what I'm going to do. So, this is how the intake manifold looks like. This is bad, but not the worst one I've seen. The parts are now in the ultrasonic cleaner. The timer has just ran out. Now let's see what it has done to the intake manifold. Here is the walnut blasting machine. Now we are done with the cleaning. This is how they look like. The owner of this Mazda CX-5 2.2 Skyactiv diesel came to me from two hours from my place because where he lives Mazda dealership quoted him 5,000 pounds just to get done what I'm going to do. So what he told me so far that he needs the engine carbon cleaning and the exhaust pressure sensor pipe changed as well because that is probably blocked and he gets like intermittent limp mode but we will check everything every live data we can beforehand so that we verify what the problem is i'll show you what to look out for so that you will be able to do the job at home as well and um, but before let's just do a rough check around the car how it looks like and if we notice any other issues with the car so i have removed the engine beauty cover and I already see there is wet around the injectors that means the seal that one below the injector holding bracket that one the oil seal is leaking so that needs to be changed as well with that included the washer because more likely it still has the copper washer and since then the revision came so it has to be changed for a new one also let me know in the comments because i'm curious like if the guy or the client came for something else something different would you let him know about another fault if you noticed so put a if you would because that's the right thing to do or b don't bother because that's not what he came for what i also see that the exhaust pressure is changed that's the latest model as you can see here is the zip tie because it has that extension so it is changed so probably that pipe is blocked and that's why he gets the intermittent fault so what I'm going to do with this one I'll try to do a different approach I remove the overflow reservoir obviously remove these bits the battery the intake box the piping and the EGR cooler and then I will try to remove the intake manifold with the whole EGR unit as one piece i'm curious if i will be able to do that what you will see in the video what i also noticed that the auxiliary belt is ribbed i don't know if the camera can focus yeah as you can see it is ribbed so that needs to be changed as well but now let's go take a seat turn the ignition on and check for the live data what that tells us now we are all connected to the OBD port of the car. The ignition is on. As you can see, the car has done around 120,000 miles. So I'm using my scan tool and I scan the car first for codes. It has faults in three modules, but we are interested in at the moment of the engine ECU. Obviously, we will check the check all of the modules, what the faults are stored and then let the owner know about the possible solution but we're interested in now in the ECU the engine ECU so let's further check that it has P2262 fault code now check for live data with the engine off when the engine is off I will be looking at the exhaust pressure sensor readings it should read 100 kPa if it anything if it reads anything below then it means 
that either it is blocked or the sensor needs replacement. Yeah, it reads 100 kPa, so that should be fine. He just has the the pipe or the tube blocked, so he ordered the part, and I will change it for him. And now we are we are checking back with the engine running. What I'm gonna looking at? I'm going to looking at the vacuum pump. I'm going to be looking at the brake booster pressure sensor readings, the oil pressure reading and the injector correction values. So let's start the engine. Now this reading should be below 10 kPa and if you press the brake pedal it should drop rapidly back to below 10 kPa, so let's do that. It was qu fairly quick, let's repeat it. So I would say that the vacuum pump on this car is working properly. If it is not, that is a telltale sign that your exhaust camshaft may be worn. So now check for the oil pressure. It should be 180 at idle. It is around that, so more likely his oil strainer is not blocked yet. And also let's check for the injector, injector correction values. These should be in between minus one and plus one. I would say the second one is a bit off, like it's closer to that limit, but all of them are within the specs. So that should be fine as well. Now I can turn off the engine and then start working on the intake manifold parts to remove them and get them cleaned. So first I'm going to drain the coolant. So I need to remove this intake box. There are two 12 millimeter bolts. Undo the clamp, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. There as well, remove the muff sensor sorry don't need to remove it just disconnect it and pry this plastic tab off of it of the intake box and just you will be able to pull the whole intake box after i already drove onto the rams and prepared a bucket for the coolant here is that plastic i don't know window or just plastic piece which which holds or which covers the drain plug for the coolant it is secured with an 8 mm bolt, but it can be a 9 because of the rust, as you can see. But use an 8 mm socket on that one. So it is from underneath, as you can see, this one. So place a bucket there to catch the coolant. I undo this one and show you where the plastic plug is, but probably you can see the wing nut plastic wing nut style plastic plug and there is also one airline which connects to the airbox this one so basically you can just pull it off from it yeah and it also attaches from underneath to that intake piping so remove it from and then disconnect from the intake box now i removed the bolts they were 10 mil not 12 mils and now i i'm able to just pull this one off And now it exposed that that plug for the coolant. It's a plastic wing nut style plug. So undo it and let the coolant drain. I have also undone the radiator cap so that air can get into the system and pushes out the coolant and put back the bolts. So I have less thing to worry about and I don't forget where they came from. So drain the coolant. Once it is draining, you can start working on the car and remove the, the bits. But first, I will show you what tools you will need for this job. And also bring out the cover so that I can cover the front of the car, the bumper, so I don't make any scratches on it. Here are all the tools that you will need for this job. The most important ones are the sockets, because you will use them the most. So prepare deep and shallow ones, 
8, 10 and 12 millimeters because you will have 8, 10 and 12 millimeter bolts and nuts. Also, these type of pliers for the hose clamps, for example, for this one. Also, have a long needle nose pliers because you will need these for different hose clamps, which let's say are located further down here. Um, basically below this intake manifold so you may not be able to put these special pliers onto the clamps so it is good to have the long needle nose pliers also these pry bars or pry tools i would say the the fork style pry tools because you will need to remove the wiring tabs let's say for example this one so that you can make the wiring loose and you will have more space removing the intake manifold also have a set of i'm using these pliers these are adjustable pliers kneepex very good one but you, you can have any other regular plier, pliers what i use it for i just put it onto the hose and then twist it a little bit so i can pull it off easier from the piping a screwdriver for this Last, uh, sorry, metal clip and also just pushing the, the hoses a bit an extension and the ratchet and a lot of time, patience and basically that's it so the job itself takes around I would say 7-ish hours so 2 hours the removal of the parts under the 2 hours putting everything back together and let's say around three hours cleaning so i i will not blast the intake ports that takes a bit it depends how bad the car is or how bad the ports are and then cleaning the parts with egr cleaner but now i have bought an ultrasonic cleaner so it shouldn't it may take the same time but less effort with the ultrasonic cleaner and i also bought a dry ice blaster so I'll try to do it with the dry ice blaster on this intake port and I'm curious to see how it will work, how effective it will be and time saving it will be. So now I'm still letting the coolant to drain while I'm removing the battery, the under tray, the charge pipe, this coolant line bracket, then the EGR and what I want to do with this one, I want to remove the whole intake manifold attached to the EGR. So I want to remove it in one place, one piece. And also I will remove this overflow reservoir because it will give me much bigger or greater space where I can work. I didn't do it before, but I, I realized that it was a huge mistake. It's a lot easier if you remove this one as well and then you will have a lot bigger space to work. Remove the battery. So in order to do that, undo the two nuts on the battery holding bracket. They are size 10 millimeter nuts. And then you can remove the bracket. Also undo the terminals on the battery, also size 10 nuts. Just pull off the terminal, put it aside. Now you can remove the battery. Once the battery is out, you can remove the battery under tray. It is held by three 12 millimeter bolts. They are fairly rusty. So undo the 12 millimeter bolts. And here is a, a plastic wiring holder tab, which you should remove. But as you can see on this particular model, it's broken. So I don't need to bother with it. It holds this wiring there. So I remove the three bolts, take out the battery tray and then put back the bolts to the place where they came from so that I won't forget where they were. Obviously I wouldn't, but it's, it makes your life a lot easier. Battery tray removed, the bolts are put back in. Next step is the charge pipe. It is held by four nuts, 12 millimeter nuts, here, here and two down on the turbo side, one on the top one on the bottom and one metal clip which you can pry off with a screwdriver and then you can remove the charge pipe so insert screwdriver here 
and here so basically you need two screwdrivers pry it off as you can see it is pried off so now i will be able to pull off the charge pipe but first let me remove the bolts not removed i can pull the charge pipe there is a gasket down there you can leave the gasket on and pull the charge pipe from here as well <laughs> okay don't forget to put back the nuts Next step is this bracket for the coolant line, so whatever it is. So since we drained the coolant, now we shouldn't have any coolant spilling all over the place. Previously, I didn't drain the coolant, so I coat it. So I removed this line, this line as well, and coat the coolant in the container or in a... I cut a bottle in half and put it underneath, so coat the coolant. But this is a lot cleaner work. We all learn down the way as we do the work. So I doing it quite often. I would say one or two cars a week. So I learned a lot. And this one, the, the bracket has two coolant lines, one here, one there. So move the clamp further up here as well. And then it has, I guess, three bolts or three nuts, sorry. Um, one is here, one is down here, and uh, this one as well. And you need to remove this intake piping. So undo the bo undo the nut, pull it off, pull back the nut, and then you can undo the other three nuts. I guess they are size 10 or 12. Let me check. This one is size 10 for the intake pipe, and the rest are size 12. So remove them and undo the coolant lines. I'll show you that as well. And then just put it aside. I usually put it up there. Now these pliers came hand, come handy. So undo the clamp. It is quite tricky one handed. Move it further, in this case down. Repeat the same with the other holes. Just turn the clamp a tiny bit. Yeah. And now you can push off or pull the coolant lines. Here is where I use the adjustable pliers. So I put it around, grip it and turn it. So now it is moving, so I will push it off. I will be able to push it off. Yeah, it is turning as well as you can see. So now I will be able to push that one off as well. <laughs> Let's try this one first, this is a lot easier. You see, no coolant is spilling. And that one, I always like push it with a screwdriver. Yeah, no coolant as you can see. And now I can carry on with the nuts. The three nuts that are holding the bracket are undone. This one, the plastic pipe is unhooked as you can see, nut is put back. So I will be able to slide the whole bracket just aside. Yeah. And now I can carry on with the EGR cooler. It has one metal shield. It, it is held by one 10 millimeter nut and a 10 millimeter bolt. Remove that one pipe, undo the pipe, the clamp on the pipe and then 
push down the the the, the but, sorry it's hose so push down the hose and then it is held by one 12 millimeter nut here and another three 12 millimeter nut down there and this electrical wiring is attached to it and also the vacuum line i will show you that in a sec also in front of the egr cooler there is this egr pipe so you need to undo the nuts of it it is i guess size 10 millimeter nuts on top and bottom undo that one here as well by the way if anybody knows what this is let me know in the comment section because i don't know most of people think that this is the throttle body but it is not i guess it is a secondary egr maybe but i'm not too sure because the throttle body is down there on the intake manifold which you will be see once i remove the whole unit so undo the, the egr pipe the coolant hose the four nuts the bolts down there and then you can pull off the egr cooler okay clamp hose clamp moved i just need to push off the hose this bolt is broke loose so by the way they are size 12 that one and the three down here two you can see and one is one is down there yeah that one here goes a 10 millimeter bolt and here a 10 millimeter nut so you can take off the shield also uh, behind that pipe or if you remove the ball uh, nuts on the end of the EGR cooler there is a metal gasket it's usually clamped onto the end of the EGR cooler but be careful not to lose it and these nuts are 12 as well so undo them you can remove the pipe and I undone the, the wiring so basically this has these tabs I just used the pry tool pried it off and then there are two 10 millimeter bolts one here another one down there remove the bolts undo the nuts and then you can pull off the egr cooler i removed the coolant overflow reservoir from here so that i have better access to the parts so basically undo this coolant hose the overflow from from here from the cap it has two taps on each side sorry one taps on each side here which goes there and there so i pried it off with the help of a flathead screwdriver just a tiny bit and also here is the wiring which goes here so i undone the plastic tab with the with the pry tool and then basically moved this one down from out of the groove, groove and then just pulled up the reservoir and wiggle it out because it gets stuck here so i wiggle it out and then that's it obviously it had still some coolant in it i emptied it already removed the four bolts from the intake pipe sorry from the egr pipe now i can pull this one off and see how bad it is remember there are gasket here and here as well but it should stay on the threads yeah i can smell carbon already and this is how it looks like after 120,000 miles and probably it was never done before usually the EGR parts are not that bad. Obviously they are bad, but the, the, the lovely part is in the intake manifold and the intake ports. I also realized that I won't be able to do what I wanted to do to remove the whole unit as one part, because underneath this, there is one bolt for the intake manifold and I won't be able to access it without removing this part. So let me, then carry on with removing the EGR cooler. The four nuts holding the EGR cooler are removed, so the EGR is free to move. Also, the two bolts from down are removed. The wiring is moved away. The coolant pipe or hose removed. The EGR pipe removed. So now I should be able to just pull this one off 
and as I said there is a gasket there be careful not to lose it and also this still may contain coolant so don't wiggle it because you will spill it all over the place yeah let's have a look inside it's pretty dirty this side as well and the gasket should be here but I cannot see it so maybe it is stuck on the other side I will find that out later so yeah this is the gasket I was talking about move the this vacuum lining or vacuum line out of the way so it can pull off here it's done and there is a nut it is a size 12 mil and there is a bolt which is a size 8 mil so undo them and then you can move the whole bracket up and this one will be free and move it aside as well the nut and bolt is removed so you can pull this one aside just like that and then you can move the bracket as well usually not usually it should be connected to this wiring but it was already disconnected so i'm gonna just remove it or maybe put it back it doesn't matter but i will have a lot more space now we are going to remove the egr so undo three bolts down there they are size 12 one two three size 12 i guess and then another two here one on the top and one on the bottom side which are size 12 i guess and then this coolant line i think it is a coolant line so squeeze the clamp push it down remove the hose squeeze the clamp clamp push it up remove the hose and i can remove this whole unit then i will remove this part basically disconnect the connector um, and there is a thing from underneath i will show you but there is one more coolant line or hose and the two bolts here these two bolts so i'm going to remove that obviously take back the nuts and then slide the whole thing off and then i'm going to undo the connectors a bunch of connectors and move the wiring aside or as much far as i can so that i will have enough space for removing the intake manifold four bolts are already removed from the egr and only one is holding it because there is a gasket in between here and i don't want to lose it and there is another gasket metal one here but it's 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 clamped on the you can see the tab so it is clamped on that side it, it won't fall off sh shouldn't so i disconnected the coolant line from the bottom as well and also the connector basically just pushed it here and sl slide it off and now i will ask my girlfriend to hold the camera so that i can remove the egr so now i'm undoing the bolt and trying not to lose the gas heat neither the bolt okay the bolt is out the gasket and then the EGR and see how it is how it looks like here here was the gasket the metal one I mentioned so it won't fall off from that it is clogged well as I said the EGR parts not the problem they don't get as bad as the intake manifold and the throttle body and the rest I will show you in a second once I remove everything now I'm removing this part so undone the two bolts they were size 10 bolts I'm disconnected the connector again pushed on the tab here and just pulled up and there is one more coolant line down there so you can either undo it there try to focus the camera yeah that one you can undo, either undo it from this side or it connects connects to the throttle body you see there so let me zoom out 
so it connects there so you have two options whichever you prefer to do undo it one side and then you can slide off this this part and as i said tell me in the comment section what this part is called because i don't even know it myself so the two bolts are out connect or disconnected i decided to undo this pipe underneath this one and now i can slide the whole thing off there is gasket in the front gasket in the back so be sure not to lose them take the front one off and you can pull the whole thing yeah and also remove the gasket because you don't want to lose it the very next thing is the intake manifold so i'm going to undo this rubber hose the clamps here here push it back remove the hose and free the wiring or cabling so this needs a 15 mil spanner maybe a, uh, i'm not able to undo it by hand so 15 mil spanner 10 mil nut underneath other than 10 mil, 10 mil nut there disconnect the connector so let me tell you which ones this one this one that one that one down there for the glow plugs this one as well and this one and there is one for the throttle body which is down there undo these two bolts they are size 8 millimeter and then remove the the connector for i think that's a temperature sensor so remove just the the connector here and that that plastic pin which is a tab for that same sensor connector wrote it back some somehow i will show you this one will be 3d bracket so you will have place space and there are another two eight millimeter bolts remove them take out this sponge and then you need to remove the intercooler pipe i will show you that but probably once it will be removed or once the whole intake manifold will be out of the car i'll show you how to remove or undo that big pipe big plastic pipe and the intake manifold has eight bolts eight 10 millimeter bolts like that i will show you where they are located and then you can remove them also i'm going to just unclip these tabs which are holding the cabling that one as well so oh and here the map sensor i need to unplug that one as well so that i will be able to move the whole wiring a lot more easier a lot more freely and that way i will have more space fiddling out the intake manifold well i disconnected the the connectors i removed this sponge from here so disconnected the connectors but why i rooted it or made it free this this temperature sensor from the bracket i put back the two bolts to the intake manifold i just made this one loose disconnected the the glow plug connector the fuel rail so basically a bunch of connectors which were in the way moved it up um disconnected the in the throttle body connector which is which comes here yeah and the connector is the here try to zoom yeah so the connector is here basically again just push on the tab here and pull it down and there is one more coolant pipe which attaches there you can there and you see that that purple dot on the line so move down the clamp and push it off and also disconnected the intercooler pipe i will show you that once i remove the intake manifold and removed the the tabs from this metal bracket nearly all of them i can remove all of them so i can pull this one out and i have even more space and i lifted this one disconnected the map sensor and what else i disconnected this plastic tab so basically i have this whole wiring now fairly free and the only thing left are the intake manifold bolts which i'll show you where they are so you see one there one there 
um, one there, one there, and one here, another one down there. It's dark there, but it's, it's there. And two on this side, this side. Let me focus. Yeah, one on the top and one on the bottom. So they are eight of them. I undo them, remove the bolts, and I will pull off the manifold and I will try to record it. My girlfriend will hold the camera so that you can see the first time I remove the intake manifold from this car as well. And you will be shocked, just as me, probably, how bad it will be. So stay tuned for that. And here comes the drum roll. Now we can remove the intake manifold. So pull it towards you. Yeah, just like that and then wiggle it out from its space oops so this is how the intake manifold looks like and show them the intake ports as well And I told you, I show you or tell you how to undo the intake manifold from this pipe. Also, it would need a cleaning of the intercooler. So basically, it is in this position. There's a plastic tab you can turn. So it is in this position when it's logged. So it is on onto the intake manifold on the bottom side of it. And then you just press it and it turns turn all the way you can and once it's stopped you grab it from this side and the other side with both of your hands so basically let's say like this you grab it on the on the rubber pipe with both of hands from both sides and push it down and wiggle it and once it's loose you just push it down and pull it towards yourself a tiny bit so it it blocks or it attaches no doesn't attach but it like gets blocked by the intake manifold so it doesn't get back on it and that's it i would say this is bad but not the worst one i've seen and let me show you here are the bolts they are size 10 millimeter bolts for the intake manifold and let me show you the, with the method I do it how many bolts are here so as you can see there are the gaskets this is the beauty cover the engine cover and I have only two bolts and two big or long bolts and two short ones and this uh, tray plastic tray for the coolant and the bolt for it so basically I have only four bolts out of it out of the car maybe six oh sorry i have these eight plus those four and the two tiny ones which goes to the intake manifold secures that that metal blade or bracket which i just dropped which is somewhere down so i'll have to pick it up anyways so now i'm going to um clean the parts with the wall uh, not with the with the ultrasonic cleaner so this is the walnut blaster this is the vac i use and here is the ultrasonic cleaner so i'm going to clean all the parts with this one so now i'm going to separate the parts so let me remove the temperature sensor from the intake manifold and the map sensor for the temperature sensor you will need a size 14 mil um, open-ended spanner then the map sensor you will need a size 8 mil hex socket
wiggle it out from its place be careful because it is plastic and old and brittle so it may bre uh, break and now we can separate the photo body from the intake manifold it is held by four bolts i guess they are eight mil let me check yes it is eight mil There is a gasket here. I remove that later. Now remove the part which causes the problem. As you can see, there should be a hole, but there is, there isn't. So this is that tube which causes the problem and triggers a fault code. In our case, it didn't trigger anything at the moment, but it could have. It is held by three eight millimeter bolts. Usually it is stuck, so you need to hit it with a hammer. So go from the side. Now it will start to turn. To turn. So I, I should be able to remove it. It is fairly stuck because of the carbon deposit, as you can see. So once I pulled it out, it is not that blocked, but it was blocked inside. And here is a gasket. Make sure you don't lose the gasket. And lastly, we can separate the EGL cooler. It is held together by two 10 mm bolts, and there is a gasket in between as well. And now I'm going to clean the parts in that ultrasonic cleaner. The parts are now in the ultrasonic cleaner. It has a 30 liter tank. So I filled it up with water, just tap water and didn't add any cleaner to it. But I cheated a little bit because I filled up with hot water and turned on the heating of the ultrasonic tank as well. Set the timer for 30 minutes. And manual says that after every 30 minutes of usage you have to let it rest for like 15 minutes and then you can use it again just to extend the lifespan of the machine so I set it up and I didn't do any like additional cleaning before the ultrasonic bath so I want to see how it does just on tap water so we can turn the machine on <clears throat> Guys, these are the parts of the EGR system and there is the intake manifold and as you could see previously that some of the parts were cleaned by the ultrasonic cleaner and the other were cleaned by my girlfriend. So the cooler, the pipe and this one, the other part of the EGR was cleaned by the ultrasonic cleaner and the tube and the rest by my girlfriend. So let me show you after one run in the ultrasonic cleaner how they look like it looks pretty good just need a bit of a touch up this one as well so i'm i'm pretty impressed with the with the cleaner this one as well obviously this one needs a bit more cleaning but it's hard to reach area i'm going to run it one more time in the ultrasonic cleaner and this one is still dirty but it's it's not that difficult to clean it anyways so but i'm going to use the cleaner a bit differently 
because now I'm going to <coughs> put boiled water in it up to the temperature as it requires so 80 degrees of Celsius and then turn it on for 30 minutes and see the results and the rest I didn't put these because it has electric connectors and I think I can use it with the ultrasonic cleaner I just need to use distilled water or deionized water and it takes 30 liters so I didn't want to use it because this is not difficult to clean as you can see my girlfriend cleaned it this one the throttle body and the another throttle body like thingy as well so it's cleaned these are good these three she's gonna touch up the other four and I'm going to run this one I think one more time in the ultrasonic cleaner but the interesting part will be the intake manifold so as you can see it is very dirty I'm going to scrub everything off with the screwdriver into the bin so all the carbon chunks big chunks going gonna go to the to the bin and then I'm going to put it into the ultrasonic cleaner and you will see the result how it looks like and after I'm going to do the intake ports with the walnut blaster I'll, I'll do one or so two ports on the camera the easiest accessible ports I will do on the camera so you see the before and after the process and then I'll do the rest of camera assemble the things back together start up the car run the diagnostics check for live data take it for test drive and then let the owner that the car is ready to be picked up so scrape as much as you can and then depending how you're gonna clean it either use the ultrasonic cleaner if you have access to it or then clean it with chemicals it is entirely up to you it is a hell of a dirty job to be honest So the intake manifold is cleaned inside with a screwdriver as much as I could. Now I filled up the ultrasonic cleaner with hot water. So as you can see now it has 80 degrees of Celsius. Take off the lid. Remove the basket and put the manifold into the basket. just like this and now I can put back it to the cleaner so it has water only in it and now I can turn it on for 30 minutes of cleaning and I will be back after the cleaning is done The timer has just ran out, now let's see what it has done to the intake manifold. So remove the basket with the intake manifold. It has cleaned it from the outside fairly good for on the first try but not from the inside so maybe I'll try to turn it the other way around put it back one more time and then see the results and again after maybe I'll put it back one more time with a chemical in it well I guess with this one already I can remove the, the dirt from the from the intake manifold a lot easier but I want to give it a one or two more go 
so I need to read I need to leave the machine rest for 10 15 minutes more like 15 minutes then I can use it again so I'll be back and show you the results of the second run and after that of the third run as well now I'm about to walnut blast the intake ports and I want to show you because a lot of you asked in the comments on various videos about this cleaning so how I set up that the valves are closed so you there is three methods I know about the one is that you stick down the endoscope to the intake port and check it if the valves are closed the second one if you remove the glow plug which was here here is the glow plug make sure when you remove it don't hit this end to anything or don't knock it to anything because you may break the 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 heater element inside and then you can throw it to the bin because it won't be working again so for for this one to be able to remove the glow plug you need to remove the wiring for the glow plug this has these plugs or tabs basically i just pulled with the needle nose plier on each of them you don't need to remove the whole one you just need you can remove only one where you are going to remove the glow plug from so put the the needle nose plier and just pull it and it will it should pull easily then for the glow plug you will need a 12 mil hex socket undo it usually you can undo them really easily so they don't really bre break i haven't had any so far that broke so you can remove them and the next method is again use the endoscope stick down to the hole and check for the piston if it is at the top that center and if it is then that means the valves is valves are closed so you have two valves for one cylinder so you can you you can do two holes at the same time also if the last so the fourth cylinder is at top that center that means the first first cylinder valves are closed as well and the second and third are open and vice versa if those two are closed these ones are open so we can do four ports at the same time and the third method is to remove the injectors and stick down the the endoscope and check for the valves this is like a bit more it requires a bit more effort or, or hustle because you need to remove the injectors and then the, it has a special tightening sequence to, to to put them back so i don't recommend it I recommend one of these I would suggest the first one stick down the endoscope to the ports and that way you don't have to remove the plugs so it, you won't have to risk that you can break them and another question like how do you turn the crankshaft or how do you make the engine turn over so here is the answer the car is lifted only one side and this one being an automatic I have the fourth gear engaged and now I am able to turn the engine over by the wheel so if I turn the wheel it turns the engine as well if you have an automatic you need to remove the wheel and that plastic trim and you will see the crankshaft bolt which is a size 21 mil bolt and you can turn it over with the ratchet or in this case because this is a CX-5 so it's fairly high you don't need to remove the wheel or the plastic trim you can just stick the, the, the socket onto the crankshaft from underneath and then you can turn the engine manually so from, from here you should have enough space but anyways the proper way remove the wheel remove the plastic and turn it by hand i'm going to turn it this way because in my case i have it a manual car so i'm lucky on that side and then i'll i'll show you the two methods the intake port and the glow plug method because i already removed the glow plug so for you to be able to see it and i'll show you the endoscope how it looks like and then i will do 
two parts, clean them with the Warner Blaster and then do the rest of the camera. So I am inside the intake port with the endoscope and as you can see, you can see the valve from here and it looks like it is closed but I will check it from, from the glow plug hole as well. I will ask my girlfriend to turn over the engine by hand at the wheel so I can see it. You need to turn it in the forward direction so that where where the the clockwise direction where the engine would normally turn. Okay. Now you can see the piston coming up. So now you can see that the piston is at top that center and then you can stop and verify from the intake port hole as well so let's check from the intake port and now as you can see the valve is closed we are looking at it from the intake port so i can do those two ports and the first two ports here is the walnut blasting machine so it is filled with walnut media. Here is the filter and the head of it. And I'm going to use it with that shop plug. It has a vacuum cleaner, but I like the Dewalt better. But maybe I will use this one later because I don't know if I have enough walnut blasting media. And this one recycles. So basically it sucks back the, the dirt and the walnut shells so I can reuse it. So let's put the filter on the top put the vacuum on the top, close it there is the gun I need to connect the air source here I'm not gonna plug it into the connector because I'm going to use the other vac and the adapters and I'm going to blast this beast so here is the adapter, I'm going to put it over the intake port, so put the gun into the hole, put the other over the other hole, and now I can turn on the vac and start blasting it. So basically this is how it looks like after one go. If you can see inside there are the media from the walnut, I'm going to hoover it out and then do one more go or maybe more. Obviously I'll do it once it will be clean and I will be happy with the end result. So you can do the same. So basically this is how I do these engines. This is how I make them clean again. Before I didn't have the, the walnut blaster, I used the chemical, so EGR spray sprayed inside the hole and then scrubbed it with a wire brush, nylon brush, drill, everything but that made a whole mess. This is a lot more clean job and easier for me as well and quicker so I prefer this method over the other one but yeah this is this is how it how it works and I'll show you the rest once I done the cleaning how they look like and basically it gives the engine another life after the cleaning. Now we are done with the cleaning and the ports look a lot better than before. I'll show you from inside as well. This is how they look like. You can see the actual valve. And the walls are clean as well. And before putting the things back together make sure you turn the wheel like at least on two times so the engine is turned over and nothing is blocked nothing got into see into the cylinders and you can freely turn the engine over so once you verified it you can put the stuff back the parts back together I'm going to do that off camera and I will be back uh, once I'm gonna start up the car because I still have to change the 
the pipe underneath the exhaust pressure sensor because the owner said that even though the sensor is new it still puts him into limp mode because the the pipe is fully blocked with carbon so guys what you can see here these are the pipes below the exhaust pressure sensor on the Mazda 2.2 Skyactiv diesel the owner had the sensor changed which is located there already but he said it didn't solve his issue because this one this is the original one the pipe was completely blocked so let me show you here i have my mitivac connected to the end and now if i pull a vacuum on it and as you can see it holds the vacuum it will drop eventually slowly but it shouldn't hold any vacuum so the whole pipe is blocked and that causes the p2292 under boost or over boost con uh, issue with the turbo i'm not sure on that one and as you can see the new one won't hold the vacuum see it doesn't hold the vacuum even though if i insert this one tighter it doesn't hold the vacuum so it is held together tightly and now even though if i pull it doesn't hold any vacuum so that means it has a free flow that, that, that's because it is a new pipe so i'm going to transfer the rubber hose from this one to the new one put that one back in that was a bit hell of a job because you had to take off the heat shields from the turbo there was like a metal piece here like this big i'll show you here and then I had to work around from every angle. That took me like 2-3 hours just to get this pipe off. Here are the metal shields. The heat shields around the turbo. So that them had to come off. And then I will put the new one back and assemble the car finally together and also here is the banjo bolt of it so this one is going to be cleaned properly so that it allows the air to flow the car is assembled back together so the cleaning is done all the bits and parts are clean now the ports the manifold the egr system i have changed the the exhaust pressure pipe so underneath the exhaust pressure sensor now I'm filling up the system with coolant, so basically I just reuse the old one, I coat it in a container and then I'm going to reuse it. Um, I'm using that spill-free funnel or filling kit, it's very handy. Here is that pipe I've changed, it was a pain in the ass, I think it took me like 4-5 or five hours just to get it out and put the new one back. So I will fill it up with all the coolant and then I'll start it up using a, a jump starter because it won't have compression for the first few attempts so usually it takes like maybe between 5 and 10 attempts to start up and once I will start it up I'll show you the live data clear the fault codes, take it for test drive and check back with you guys we are up and running the car started up on the first atom which is not usual i'm still letting the air out of the coolant the cooling system so i'm going to bleed it then take it for a test drive no fault codes or no signs on the dashboard appeared obviously i'm going to scan the car for codes check for live data and take it for this drive and here is the jump starter i use This is the jump starter, so I connect it to the battery and it helps to start the car because usually these ones, the Skyactiv engines, after the cleaning, they take around between 5 and 10 attempts to, to start the car. I have checked for the codes and I'm back from the test drive. Everything seems good. The car drives normally and it pulls as it should. Checked for codes. No one came back, so no faults code at all and check for the live data engine oil pressure is moving but it gets up to 180 it, he may have 
the oil channel getting blocked so maybe that needs to be changed exhaust pressure sensor reads about 100 kpa so it's good that cleaning helped it was the same before but the owner told that he the car put himself into limp mode and now it's okay i tried it and and didn't go into limp mode and check for the injectors they seem to be good because they are within the specs so guys this was it this is how you clean the intake manifold, the intake ports and the EGR system on the Mazda 2.2 Skyactiv diesel engine. Unfortunately I couldn't record how to change that pipe because that took me I think 5 hours and it was real pain in the ass, it was a really difficult job. Here I have really I had really small room to work in. So but maybe I'll try to put or make a video about it like with with a little bit of detail how to add them to that job but in the future I will definitely remove the engine so that I can inspect the turbo and I will have better access to the things so thanks for watching and see you in the next one